we need to create a key store to manage encryption elements and processes. For this, we like a tool called Key Store Explorer. We'll create the key store, which stores the key pair. The key store is a file that we make available to the AE host. The key store and key pair have passwords, which are needed by Atomic Automation. You can set them unencrypted in the AE file system. That works fine. But you should encrypt them for maximum security using an Atomic Executable called UCB Crypt. Finally, we'll deploy the key store and start the JCP. So our objective is to create a key store and then deploy it for the JCP to work. We're trying to secure communications between AWI, Analytics and the Agents, and the Automation Engine. The Java Communications process handles this task. Without the key store, JCP can't start. First, we start with a fully installed Atomic Automation, which we can control via the Service Manager. Service Manager is secured with CAPKI and is not affected by the TLS implementation. This is also true for all AE processes except JCP. They can be started without TLS. TLS has to be deployed to start JCP and to allow AWI, Analytics, and the agents to connect to AE. First, we use Key Store Explorer to configure and generate the key store. The naming and encryption requirements are quite strict, and you should follow them. We'll copy the key store file to the Automation Engine's bin directory. This isn't a requirement. The file can live anywhere. We do this for convenience and to keep things together in one place. The key store and key pair are both protected with the respective passwords, which are required by UCSRV.ini for AE to work. We use the atomic executable UCBcrypt.exe to encrypt the two passwords so they're protected. Then we update UCSRV.ini. We specify the name and location of the key store file and the two encrypted passwords. Finally, we start JCP to make sure it works. We ask that you create the key store with the following. These are basic requirements for the TLS configuration to work. We'll show this in the demo. We start with the basic atomic automation configuration. The core components have been installed except for analytics. Analytics is secured the same way as AWI, and so we didn't include it to keep things simple. Most of the services aren't directly impacted by TLS, and so we just start them. Those that are impacted, namely JCP, AWI, and the Windows agents, cannot be started until TLS is deployed. Here we're going to deploy the key store so that JCP can start and communications with the automation engine are secure. If we try and start JCP, the connection dies after a few seconds. We downloaded and installed Key Store Explorer. We can start it. We're in the Key Store. We use the Tools menu to create a new key pair. This is the certificate associated with the key pair. The certificate needs one name field to be populated, the common name. This has to be the name of the AE host. The other fields can be ignored. The key pair needs an alias, Keep this in mind because the alias needs to be referenced in ucsrv.ini. We can use anything, so for our purposes, we'll use the AE host name. The key pair needs a password. You can enter anything you want, but you should avoid the caret symbols, which don't encrypt well. We recommend using a password that can be differentiated from the key store passwords. We always save the key store. You enter a password for the key store in a location. Since the key store is required by the automation engine, we keep it simple and store the key store file in the AE bin directory. You can use Key Store Explorer on a different machine. Then all you have to do is copy the key store file over to the AE host and store it anywhere you want. Give the key store a password that'll help you differentiate from the key pair passwords. 
Since this is a demo environment, my security requirements aren't very strict. I use the same password for key store and key pair, but add S at the end of one for the store and P at the end of the other for the pair. You can name the key store anything you want. We navigate to the installation package and copy the tools directory over to your installation path. Inside you find the encrypt subdirectory. In there you find the ucbcrypt.exe utility. We use this to encrypt our two passwords. Encrypting passwords is a good practice for all other components, like the ODBC var string for utilities and AE. The utility is invoked on the command line. The syntax is simple. It's the executable dash p dash n and the password you entered for the key store. This generates a file called password.ucc in the same directory. You have to repeat the procedure for the key pair password, but make sure you store the encrypted key store password first, since the executable simply overwrites. Back in the encrypt directory, we have the ucc file with the encrypted passwords. Be sure to use a simple text editor like Notepad, since other products may actually add unwanted characters, which effectively alters your passwords. We ran the process twice for the key store and key pair passwords. We have two password files, which we renamed so that we can differentiate them. We place the key store file in A's bin directory. We need to update the TLS section of ucsrv.ini and enter the appropriate information, namely the location of the key store file, both passwords, and the key pair alias. This is important when you copy and paste the encrypted password from the UCC file. Avoid copying the two starting hyphens. AA can interpret them. In our case, we copied the whole thing, but behind the scenes, we removed the copied hyphen symbols and retyped them manually. Do this for every password you encrypt with UCB Crypt. We've entered all the relevant information. We can save the file. TLS has been configured to secure communications to the automation engine. Let's check this by starting the JCP. The JCP is started and connections are being established. The automation engine can start receiving secure incoming connections from the endpoints.